Hip and knee joints are the most commonly replaced joints in the United States. Approximately 773,000 Americans have hip or knee replacement surgery every year. Join TGMC as they discuss everything you need to know when considering joint replacement surgery. Joining us is Dr. H. Lawrence Haydell, an orthopedic surgeon at Terrebonne General Medical Center. All right, with that introduction, we do have uh, Dr. Lawrence Haydell with us. And uh, doctor, we certainly want to welcome you to the program. Thanks for coming by. Sure, hello. All right, uh, I guess we'll just start, uh, maybe it's basic to you, but maybe certainly not to a lot of people. I mean, what is a joint? Uh, well, a joint is where two bones come together together to uh, for allowing motion. Uh, usually on the end of the bone is a uh, cartilage that allows for contact between the bones and is attached by uh, ligaments. Typical examples is uh, an ankle, a hip, a knee, or a shoulder is, is an example of joints. Sure. Okay. And um, I know, you know, I guess from just growing older, as a lot of people do, uh, arthritis uh, certainly has an effect on joints. Tell us a little bit, I guess, about arthritis and its relationship and, you know, what is arthritis? Well, there's uh, several types of arthritis. The most common that we see and treat in the office is osteoarthritis or degenerative type arthritis. And what that is is uh, wear and tear, normal wear and tear of the joint as the as patients age. It's a normal aging process um, where the cartilage wears down. Uh, some patients do get early onset arthritis, uh, which is usually inherited uh, as genetics involved. Also, patients who get trauma to joints can get an early onset of arthritis. Right. But everyone does get it over time, uh, which is the normal aging process. Okay, and I think we may have some slides, uh, and maybe you can kind of point out what we're looking at on, at on the screen. Yeah, uh, that's an x-ray on the left is a normal healthy joint. You can see where there's a nice joint space um, between the two ends of the bone. That's cartilage. Cartilage does not show up on x-ray, so it shows up as a gap. Okay. The x-ray on the right, you can see where the cartilage is worn down to where you now have bone-on-bone -bone contact. And uh, that is where the pain comes from. You don't have nerve endings in the cartilage. So once the cartilage is gone, the nerve fibers in the bone will be affected by having bone rubbing on bone. And that's what causes the pain in an arthritic joint. Okay. And I think we have an example of a hip. Uh, that's an x-ray on the left. There's a normal hip with a normal joint space. And you can see the difference on the right where there's uh, the joint space is obliterated, where you have bone on bone contact. And that's what causes the pain. Okay, uh, it's pretty easy the way the arrows all pointed that right. you can kind of see that distinctly. Um, now, let me ask you, uh, with, for somebody that, uh, you know, has uh, that condition that we just saw, the arthritis uh, that we showed, I mean, it, it, is surgery uh, something you have to do or are there non-surgical treatments? Uh, there's several non-operative treatments, uh, first being medication. There's, there's several different types of medication we use. One is a non steroidal anti-inflammatories. An example of that is ibuprofen. There's a lot of different ones on the market that we use at a prescription, prescription strength. There's also the narcotics for more severe pain. Uh, there's some over-the-counter medications such as glucosamine, sulfate, or chondroitin sulfate that some patients will use. Uh, some believe that that rebuilds cartilage in the joint, but that has never really been proven to uh, be true. Um, other options are physical therapy, which may sometimes help uh, with joint pain. Uh, we also do injections, which is a shot in the joint. Uh, we usually will sh uh, inject with steroids, which helps reduce the pain and inflammation in a joint. Um, also, there's a synthetic gel that we use that people know as comes from roosters or chicken, the chicken uh, shot. Okay. And it's, it, that's where the material comes from, but it's injected in the joint. It has lubrication and a cushion to the joint, right. and that's to help relieve the pain. No, I certainly didn't know that. Uh, now, let me just ask you, uh, and I'm trying to, uh, at what point is it that you uh, get to the point or a patient gets to the point to where maybe they're going to start discussing with their doctor joint replacement surgery for that? Well, most patients typically come in with uh, pain that decreases their uh, normal daily activity. They have a decreased quality of life. They may find that they're not able to go shopping or uh, on vacation as much because they can't walk as far because of the pain. So. Uh, Patients will come in uh, typically for evaluation of this. Uh, 
and we'll discuss different treatment options with them uh, concerning their arthritis and pain. And what, uh, I guess, what things do you kind of consider uh, in, in deciding whether or not to recommend uh, surgery to a patient? Well, first we evaluate the patient uh, with, with examination, then we'll do x-rays to determine the severity of the arthritis. And depending on how bad the arthritis is, we may treat them sometimes with uh, the non-operative treatment. Uh, if it's severe and they fail conservative management, then we discuss joint replacement surgery. All right. Uh, interesting. And uh, what we'll do, let's take a break right now and we're going to come back. And I know we have some more uh, stuff to get on the screen. And the doctor has something that he wants to kind of show you uh, concerning the replacements. And uh, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Lawrence Haydell. Don't go away. I'm a director here at the Little Theater in Homa. Sometimes I've acted, and I've even played in the orchestra. My name is Karen Schilling, and I was treated for breast cancer at Mary Bird Perkins at TGMC. Quality medical care and compassion should go hand in hand, and I definitely got that at Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. My doctors were incredible, and the technology is state of the art. I believe that everyone at Mary Bird Perkins at TGMC deserves a standing ovation. Terrebonne General and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center bring a new standard of high quality, comprehensive cancer treatment to our community. Now in one convenient location in Homa, bringing together world-class technology and a caring and healing environment to provide the best patient experience possible. Our new cancer center was built for you because we care for you. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC, Homa. My PhD is in chemistry, so I've spent a lot of time doing research in the lab. I work for Albemarle Corporation. My name is Arcelio Malcolm, and I was treated for prostate cancer at Mary Bird Perkins. I went to Houston for a second opinion, and they recommended the same treatment plan, so I chose to be near my family and have the treatment done here. When you research the technology and the doctors, you see that uh, Mary Bird Perkins is a perfect choice. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. Okay, welcome back to To Your Health with TGMC. And our guest again today is uh, Dr. H. Lawrence Haydell, orthopedic surgeon here in Terrebonne Parish. And uh, Dr. Haydell, we kind of touched a little bit about, about uh, joint replacement surgery, uh, but maybe let, maybe tell us a little bit, bit more, you know, what is it actually? What, what are you doing as a surgeon? Uh, what we're doing is uh, we go into the joint and remove the damaged surfaces and replacing it with an artificial joint. Um, we have a, uh, an example of a, a joint in place. Um, okay. The, you can see the picture on the left is a typical arthritic joint with the worn out areas with exposed bone. Uh, the picture on the right is a picture with the prosthesis actually in place. So the entire joint surface is removed. You can see a, a metal implant on the end of the femur or the thigh bone and a metal tray of the tibial component, which is the lower part with a plastic spacer in between. Um, and we also have an example of a hip joint. Okay. That's a typical hip prosthesis on the left. Uh, and the right is a picture of it actually implanted in the bone. Uh, and these components are, uh, they're made up of different types of metals. Uh, you they're made up of cobalt chromium and stainless steel. Uh, some of these are made of titanium. Um, and the spacer in between is a special plastic called polyethylene. Okay. And that's what these prostheses are made of. Now, if somebody needs to go through this uh, type of surgery, I mean, how do they prepare for it? Uh, well, first, after consultation in the office and we decide for surgery, uh, we put the patient through a routine preoperative uh, workup, which includes lab work, EKG, chest x-ray. We do a urinalysis. Some patients do require medical clearance from their medical doctor if they have any medical issues. Okay. And we do discuss uh, you know, all the different complications that can arise with uh, this type of surgery. Two of the main ones are infection and blood clots. Tell us a, yeah, okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the surgery itself you know, and how it's actually performed uh, you know, by the surgeon. Well, um, first the patient generally goes under an anesthetic, uh, which is either general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia. Um, and then uh, the, for a knee replacement, this typically takes about one hour. We make a, a cut on the, an, on the front portion of the knee, and this is a, uh, an example of a, a knee, yeah, of a knee prosthesis. Uh, and what we do is this is the patient's bone, 
So what we do is we make a, a special cut on the end of the bone to remove the joint surfaces. If you can see this, uh, you can see where the uh, bone is cut, and this is the metal prosthesis that is placed over that, which is a perfect fit onto the uh, bone. Right. We also make a cut on the bottom portion, uh, make a fight cut over the tibia, and this is a metal tray that is with a peg that goes into this position. Both of these metal components are cemented with a bone cement. And that white in the middle is a uh, plastic spacer. That's the polyethylene spacer that allows for the articulation when the patient walks. So they now have metal rubbing on plastic instead of bone on bone, and that's what relieves the pain. Okay. And then uh, that was a knee that you just did? That was a knee. Okay. Uh, also have an example of a hip. Uh, the hip is a ball and socket joint, so it's somewhat of a different type of prosthesis. Uh, what we do is they have their normal head on the, uh, on the bone. This is a cut with a, a saw. The femoral head is removed. We then ream out this canal and uh, bore out a hole so that the prosthesis will fit down in the femoral shaft, and that's, what, and that's kind of press fit in there. It's not cemented, and that allows for stability. We also replace the cup portion with a... Um, this is ringed down. This is a metal cup that's placed in. Sometimes it's a metal liner, sometimes it's a plastic liner, which is the polyethylene. Once that is replaced, the ball is placed back into the socket and that allows for the articulation where that relieves the pain uh, instead of having that bone on bone that you saw on the x ray. Okay, now after the surgery, and uh, I know you're in the operating room uh, performing the surgery that you just described, um, I guess what happens next after the surgery? Uh, well, after surgery, the patient is transferred to the recovery room where they stay for approximately an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, from there, they are transferred to the floor. They place on pain medication the first night. Uh, first day after surgery, we start them on physical therapy with walking with a walker. They allow the full weight bear the day after surgery. Uh, for knees, we do put them on a machine called a motion machine that allows motion to the knee, which is progressively increased. Uh, these patients typically in a hospital anywhere from three to five days. Um, as a general rule, we want them walking up and down the hall with a walker and for knees bending it to 90 degrees before going home. Okay. And when they do go home, we do set them up with a home therapist uh, until they're on their feet, and then we set them up with outpatient therapy, which typically goes on for about three month, about a two to three month duration. Try to keep it moving, I guess, at, at, it, at the pace that y'all direct. That's, that's correct. Okay. Most patients typically off a walker by uh, three weeks. All right. And uh, the joints themselves, I mean, they look like very sturdy material i'm just i mean how, how long do they last um on the average we say about 15 years you know it really depends on the age of the patient and uh the activity level of the patient and, you know an older patient of course is not going to be as active they may they may get 20 plus years a younger patient who is much more active may only get 10 years but on the average it's around 15 years and uh is there anything i guess the patient can do to 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 try to extend that period and, and how it lasts or maybe you know try to take care of themselves yeah i mean we typically try to have them refrain from any uh, uh anything that will pound on the knee you know we tell them you know to, to try to restrain from climbing squatting any kind of running type activities uh, of course, older patients, you know, they're going to be a little less active and they will last a lot longer. It's so the younger patients you have to get on and say, look, you shouldn't be doing certain things because it will wear out. And if it does, you're going to have to have it redone. And a revision is always more difficult than doing a primary uh, knee. Okay. And then um, I guess for young, younger people or people, you know, who are healthy and maybe not uh, experiencing that pain yet, is there anything in general that people can do to keep good, healthy joints? Uh, it's good to exercise. Exercise is good for the joints, keeps the muscles strong around the joints. Um, doing the right types of exercises, uh, of course, uh, exercises that don't pound the joints are the best, like swimming, cycling, um, exercise like ellipticals and stairmasters, jogging, you know, is good exercise, but pounding of the joint will wear the joints out quicker. We also recommend patients uh, try to lose weight if they're overweight because weight definitely causes a lot of wear and tear in the joint. Okay. All right. Um, you know, it's a very interesting uh, subject, doctor. We appreciate it. I, I, people may have more, want more information. Is there any place that they can get some more information? Yes, they can either call uh, Terrebonne General Hospital. Uh, the number is up on the screen. Also, uh, at the home orthopedic clinic, uh, they can call, get an appointment if they have any questions about um, uh, their, if they're having pain, have any questions or want a consultation concerning their uh, pain or their joints. All right. Very good. We, again, want to thank you and TGMC as always, but thank you so much for coming by so that we can uh, share this information with our audience. 
Sure. Thank you. Okay. You're quite welcome. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a break and there'll be more on Bayou Time. <laughs> 